Hello friends, this video on biodiversity and conservation part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now what we are going to talk about is the patterns of biodiversity. Now here we will see that why the biodiversity is different in different places. So just now I took the example of India that in India the biodiversity is quite good. So a, a good uh, variety of living organisms live here. Now, how biodiversity changes, how it varies from one location to other location. So, while talking about this, we will consider two important concepts which define the pattern of biodiversity, which defines how biodiversity changes from one place or from one region to another. So, the first factor is the first concept which we will talk about is latitudinal gradient. Even before I talk about latitudinal gradient, I would like to know if you know what is a latitude and what is a longitude. So this is something which you would have studied in your uh, geography, in your junior classes. So however, we will start with the basics. We will try to understand what do we mean by latitudinal gradient. Now, this concept says that the diversity of species decreases as we move from equator towards the poles. So this is actually the concept of latitudinal diversity. Now here we have used several terms like equator, poles, latitude, longitude. So let us first try to understand what they are. So for that we would take the earth. So this is how the earth look like. This is how the model of the earth would be approximately. So on this earth you have this central line and this central line is the equator and these are the poles. So the two extreme ends are the poles and this is the equator. And what are latitudes? So latitudes are basically these lines. And what are longitudes? Longitudes are basically the vertical lines. But what is a latitude and what is a longitude? Now, let us try to understand that. So first, let us talk about latitude. So latitude is nothing but the angular distance of a place north or south of the Earth's equator. So here is the Earth's equator. So this line which passes through the center or the, it is not a line basically because the earth is a sphere so the equator is actually like a circle or you can consider a sphere there is a ring which is present at the center of the sphere so that ring is equator so now if we want to measure the distance of a place now see there are so many places which will be located on this sphere now how do we understand where exactly that place is located so for that we need some parameter so how do we measure it we measure in terms of the angular distance of that place with respect to the equator so angular distance of a place north or south of the equator is determined by the latitude so here you can see this is the latitude so these rings, so they are also like rings which are present on the north as well as on the south of the equator. So these are the latitudes on the north and these are the latitudes to on the south of the equator. So these latitudes will define where the location of a place. Now how do we define latitude? Let us suppose if I say a particular place is located 51 degree north latitude that means that place is located at 51 degree north side of the equator so that actually defines the exact location of that place so that is the latitude so these lines which we have here they are latitude and what is longitude? A similar concept, just that they will display the angular distance of a place east or west of the standard meridian. Like how you have equator here. Similarly, here you have the standard meridian. So at the center, the line which you have, that is called the standard meridian. So towards the east or west of the standard meridian, you have the longitude. So these are the longitudes. So that is latitude and longitude. Now, what is latitudinal gradient? Let, let, gradient? let us come back to the topic. Now, one more thing is when you talk about latitude, how do we measure it? So at equator, we say this is zero degree and then gradually it keeps on increasing like zero, then 20 degree, 40 degree, 60 degree and so on. So that is how it keeps on increasing. So that's how we define it. How many degrees north or how many degrees south? That's it. So it is expressed in degrees and minutes. 
So that was about that was a brief introduction to latitude and longitude. Now let's come back to latitudinal gradient. So this latitudinal gradient, what does it say? It says that the diversity of species is going to be more near the equator. So the places which are located near the equator, they will have more diversity of species. They will have more variety of species. But as we start moving towards the poles, either on in the north direction or in the south direction, the diversity of species will decrease. And this concept is known as latitudinal gradient because with the latitude, the diversity is decreasing. So now if you look at the world map, you will get to see the places which are located comparatively near the equator. So if the equator, I mean just an example, if the equator is located say somewhere here. So now if you see India, where is India? So this is where India is located. So if you see, India is comparatively quite closer to the equator and that is why India has a greater diversity of species. Now, this, con this latitudinal gradient is often termed as LDG. So, LDG means latitudinal. So, this is also known as LDG, where LDG is latitudinal diversity gradient. So, now I hope you got the concept that why do we talk about this gradient? That's because the diversity of plants and animals throughout the world is not uniform. So it has an uneven distribution. So in some places the diversity is more, in some places the diversity is less. So as you can see near these places, these are the areas where the diversity is more and these are the areas where the diversity is less. Therefore near the poles, the variety of plants and animals is quite less as compared to the regions which are near the equator. So that is why we talk about latitudinal diversity gradient. So I hope this concept of latitudinal gradient is clear here. So now the question is why latitudinal gradient exists? Why this this sort of a variation happens. Why is it that near the equator the variety of living organisms is more and near the poles the variety is less? Why does that happen? So let us try to look at that part. Now the tropical latitudes remain undisturbed for years. Now what is tropical areas and what do we mean by temperate areas? So tropical areas are the areas which are near the equator. So the tropical areas are the areas near equator and the temperate areas are the areas near the poles. So the temperate areas are also known as polar areas because they are situated near the poles. And those areas which are situated near the equator, they are called the tropic regions. So now the tropic latitudes remain undisturbed for years. That means the latitudes which are present near the equator may be somewhere here. So if this is the equator and if these are the tropical latitudes because these latitudes are comparatively nearer to the equator. So these latitudes remain undisturbed for years. Now what do we mean by undisturbed? That means now if you compare these tropical latitudes with the polar latitudes that means the latitudes which are present somewhere here near the poles now near the poles what happens is these type these areas are more uh, they, they experience more frequent glaciations which can destroy the entire area which can destroy the entire species so those kind of uh, disturbances happen more frequently in the polar areas and as a result, the polar regions, uh, the, the destruction of species in polar regions is more. Therefore, the tropical areas being undisturbed, they actually continue to have their older species also. Like it is something like this. Let us suppose you have a collection of say 10 books, 10 different books you have. And your friend has say, uh, say 15 different books. Now what happens is, somebody comes and uh, burns all those 10 books of yours. A thief enters inside your house and he steals all your 10 different books. Now what happens? The next day you don't have, you have zero books. You do not have even one book, but your friend still has 15 books. So now again, you start buying new books. 
So after a period of say one month, you might have 10 books, but now your friend has some 25 books because he already had the previous 15 books. On top of that, he bought another 10 books. So overall, your friend has more variety of books than you. That's because he remained undisturbed. He was not disturbed by a thief. So the same thing happens here. Since the tropical areas get dis do not get disturbed, so they have higher variety or higher collection of living organisms. Organisms. Whereas the polar regions, they are subjected to frequent glaciations which destroy their collection of species and therefore they have lesser variety of living organisms. The next is suitable environment. So the environment in the uh, tropical areas are more suitable when compared to the polar areas. Now what do we mean by suitable environment? <clears throat> the climatic changes, the changes in climate in the polar regions are very frequent. So in the polar regions, the climate keep changing frequently and also the climate changes are very unpredictable. So you do not know when it is going to, uh, they, when, when there is going to be a glaciation, you do not know when the environment is going to be extremely cold it will be freezing and again suddenly the weather will change so it becomes very difficult to living or for the living organism to adapt to such frequently changing environment therefore many of the living organisms are not able to survive in that climatic condition and in fact many of the living organisms migrate from that place so they do not want to stay in that place with so much of climatic variations and some of them even die due to extreme climates so climatic variation is another important factor because of which the variety of living organisms in the polar regions is less when compared to the tropical regions. Whereas in the tropical regions, the climatic changes are very much predictable and they are quite stable. So that means the organisms also adapt themselves as per the climatic a condition of that particular area. So therefore, uh, the tropical areas are more suitable for niche because every living organism want to live in a suitable climate. Third is the availability of more solar energy. So if you look at the location of the uh, polar regions and the location of the uh, tropical regions, you will see that the regions which are located near the equator because of their location, they tend to get more solar energy. So when they get more solar energy, solar energy sun is the main source of energy for the survival of all the life forms on earth. Now when the availability of solar energy is more on the equatorial region, then the uh, sustenance of the living organisms also is more in the tropical regions and that is why uh, the variety of living organisms would be more in the tropical region. So these are some of the reasons which justify that why this concept of latitudinal gradient exists. So what do we understand from this entire concept of latitudinal diversity gradient that the diversity of organisms decreases as we move from equator to poles and that is why the tropical areas are more diverse, they have more diversity as compared to the polar areas. Now one quick example which you can think of is the Amazon rainforest of South America which is a very famous forest. Now this forest has the highest diversity in the world. And if you look at its location, it is located in the tropical area. It is located quite close to the equator. So because of its location, it has all the positive things. It has a suitable climatic condition. It has, it, it remains undisturbed most of the time. It has good amount of uh, availability of solar energy. So because of all these favorable factors, it can support the highest diversity. And on similar um, explanations, you can also justify or you can also understand why India also has a decent uh, biodiversity, even though it has a smaller land area. That's because India is also comparatively closer to the equator. So this was the first concept of latitudinal diversity gradient. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.